Hi there. Hi. So this is key area three gene expression. Again, we're going to broach it in three uh, different sections, uh, starting with gene expression and RNA. Yeah, uh, just before we start, I will point out the elephant in the room. Yes, I do not work at Perth High School anymore. I shouldn't be here. But Miss Mills is my landlord and doesn't like doing these things alone, so wrote me into it. It because... feels really weird just talking to a computer by yourself. It's, it's just strange. So it's easier with Miss Armstrong here. And I get a place to live out mm. of it. Ish. Okay, so things that you should know from National 5 that are going to be linked to this topic are up on the screen just now. So genes control specific characteristics, hair colour, eye colour, height, blood type, obviously not things like, I don't know, talent, things like that, that tends to be very much genetic factors. The combination of alleles in a person is their genotype. So remember, alleles are different forms of the same gene. So you've got, say, a hair colour gene, and you could have brown version, a blonde version, a red version, a black version, a white version. All of those are same gene, but different forms of it. Uh, depending on their genotype, a person will show a specific phenotype. So, for example, I know in my body I have at least one gene for brown hair because my hair is brown when it's not going grey. Um, and the fact that genes make protein. So these are things that you should already be aware of. OK, so gene expression essentially is protein synthesis. But there's an important connection that you need to make behind this idea of a gene being a code that makes a specific protein and then that protein actually having a physical effect on an organism, particularly humans. So the sequences of bases in a gene, so all those A's, G's, C's and T's that we were talking about in structure of DNA, they are going to help build a particular protein and that protein will cause a person to show a particular phenotype. So in the example in the picture there, we've got a chromosome and the rhesus gene is isolated. Now the rhesus gene is something to do with blood type. It's basically are you positive or are you negative? Rhesus positive means you have the rhesus gene to make the rhesus antigen. Rhesus negative means you don't have that gene. So in the rhesus gene, the idea is the code will go off via mRNA to the ribosome that will build the rhesus protein. And that rhesus protein will go and attach itself into new red blood cells, showing the rhesus antigen, making that person rhesus positive. OK, so we've gone all the way from genotype, the rhesus gene is there, to phenotype, the person is showing the rhesus protein attached onto their red blood cells. Now, remember this idea from division and differentiation. Even though every cell with a nucleus has every gene inside of it, not all of these genes are expressed. So in skin cells, 100% of the chromosomes are there, but not all of the genes are active inside those chromosomes. OK, only the genes characteristic for that type of cell are going to be expressed. And not every gene that is switched on is going to be expressed all of the time. So, for example, insulin. If that was constantly switched on, if we were constantly producing insulin, we would die. OK, it's only produced when it's needed. And this means that genes can actually be affected by things that are inside and outside of the cell. So you can actually switch on genes based on what's happening to your body temperature or certain hormones or certain drugs that you've just taken into your system. So these are known as intracellular and extracellular factors. Now, that bit of knowledge there is actually a slightly older bit of knowledge. I'm not sure that they would really ask you about those kinds of things anymore in an exam. So if you are struggling with this idea, don't worry too much about it. OK, so an example of gene expression is fireflies. Now, I've got this stupid thing where in my head I think that fireflies are hot. They are not. The idea is they make a protein called luciferase. And I love that name. That, that's just a fantastic name uh, that catalyzes a reaction that releases light. OK, they produce this protein only at night time when the glow can be seen. If they made this all day, every day, that would waste energy. And in, in uh, biology, wasted energy means you're a dead thing. OK, um, so the idea is you've got your gene for luciferase. It makes a luciferase protein that will make the glowingness. Uh, and that's the idea, the idea of genotype to phenotype. Now, this link you can access via the Sway. So if you have a look at the Sway, you can see that link at the bottom and it takes you to an animation that basically explains all of this idea behind fireflies. OK, so the next part of this video, we're going to touch on protein synthesis. So stuff you should know from that five, uh, the idea that DNA unwinds and it will open up at that particular gene that codes for the protein that is going to be want to made. It's not the whole DNA that unwinds. It's just open at that particular gene. 
a a single-stranded molecule, which is called mRNA, is made between the two complementary strands of DNA that have unwound. And this is done through complementary bases lining up in the same way as your normal DNA bases would. Uh, mRNA then leaves the nucleus to go to the ribosome, because remember, DNA, it can't leave the nucleus, but mRNA can. So that's the thing that carries the complementary code to the ribosome. And then the proteins are made at the ribosome using that mRNA code to bring in amino acids. And it, those amino acids are the things that build to become the protein. So um, we're going to touch on some new structures here. This is the structure of RNA. So you learned at National 5 about mRNA. We're going to learn slightly more examples than just mRNA. So for the basis of RNA, it's pretty similar to DNA. You can see a picture here. Uh, it's still in this, these nucleotide structures that we talked about. The only difference now is instead of a deoxyribose sugar, it's now a ribose sugar, which is why deoxyribose is for DNA, ribose is for RNA. So Super ribose important. sugar, it's got a base, it's got a phosphate. So very, very similar to DNA nucleotides, just a different sugar. You need to know that fact. So there are three types of RNA you need to know at, and during higher human. Um, and we're going to touch a bit on what each of these do and their different roles uh, over this video and the next one. So the first one, messenger mRNA, uh, messenger RNA, also known as mRNA, which is the one you already know about. That's the one that carries that complementary copy of the, the code from the gene from the nucleus to the ribosome. We then have transfer RNA, which is called tRNA. You can call it either the full name or the short name. Generally, we go for the short name. Um, but it's useful to know what the, the letters stand for. So tRNA carries a specific amino acid to the ribosome. So it's not in the nucleus. It's got nothing to do with playing with the DNA. It is only responsible for bringing amino acids to the ribosome. And then the final one, ribosomal RNA, which is rRNA. This is the one we know, we'll talk the least about. It basically makes up the ribosome along with different associated proteins. And that's really all we need to know about that one. That one doesn't come up very much at all. Um, and then there's one crucial point to know about this is obviously all three of them play a role in protein synthesis. But one really important thing to know is that RNA does not contain the base thymine. So where you knew that adenine matches with thymine in DNA, that doesn't happen anymore. RNA does not have that T base anywhere. Instead, it has a base called uracil. So uracil, wherever there would be a thymine, there is now a uracil. It works pretty much in the same way, so that whenever there's an adenine, you will find a uracil. And then whenever there's a uracil, you will find an adenine and vice versa. Uh, if this was DNA, obviously it would be thymine, but we're going to kind of go into this a wee bit more as well as go on. So uh, you can see here on the right hand side, there is a nice wee gif just showing you the three different types of RNA and the role that they really do. Um, so ribosomal RNA is that top one there. It's basically just found in the ribosome along with proteins. You don't need to know any more. You don't need to know what it looks like. You just need to know that it's in the ribosome. Messenger RNA. So that's that blue strand with the little kind of black teeth coming out of it. That's the one that you know about. That's the one we've talked about in National 5. That's that one carrying the code. And then tRNA. So in this bottom one, you can see it now in green. It's in grey in the two diagrams above. Uh, it's that weird shaped thing that for some reason has eyes in the bottom gift. It doesn't have eyes in real life. Uh, that's the thing carrying the amino acid. And it always looks that kind of shape. And it always comes in with those three little teeth on the bottom attaching to the mRNA with the amino acid at the top end of it. Now, the structure of this is really important. We are going to touch on this a bit more. That word specific, super important. If you say in an exam, uh, our tRNA carries an amino acid to the ribosome, zero points. A specific amino acid, all the points. Yep, so really, really important you do that. Um, final thing that we're going to talk about in this video is just a comparison of DNA versus RNA. So these things you should already know about DNA. You know it's a double-stranded molecule. It's that double helix shape. Uh, it is deoxyribose sugars and its bases are A, C, G and T, whereas RNA, it is single-stranded. So that's one of the big, big differences. It's not a double-stranded helix. It's a single-stranded helix. You can see nicely in the diagram here the difference between them. It is a ribose sugar and it has its bases E, A, C, G and U. So remember U for uracil instead of thymine. 
there's something uh, I got asked a couple of years ago and I looked into the reasons why and it's basically why does uracil exist? What's the point of it compared to thymine? Um, and as far as I understand, the answer is uracil is older. If we look at human ev all evolution is uracil was the first base to be trotting around. Thymine is actually a mutation. It's actually uh, something that arose a bit later. If we look at viruses as an example, viruses do not contain DNA. They contain RNA instead. And they're one of the most simple forms of life that actually exist, which suggests that building protein is, had to come before um, large sets of very complicated instructions that formed more complex proteins. So it's actually a really kind of strange idea to think that RNA was actually first, then DNA as a more complex set of instructions came in later with this new mutation of a thymine base. Which to clarify is just the extra information. You do oh, not yes. need to no, remember no, 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 that no. fact. No, 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 not That's no. just a nice interesting <laughs> fact. Okay, so on to section two on how protein synthesis actually does. See you in the next video.